friends, this is BJ Baker. I'm Maria. And yes, I do know I'm a little extra today. Sometimes you just want to be a little extra. So I am <laughs> feeling fabulous. So we'll just go with that, okay? Speaking of fabulous, we're going to be making this. <sighs> fabulous isn't quite. Fabulous is here. This is phenomenal. It's a, a beef bone broth. And again, remember the, the broth versus the stock. The broths are made, they're richer. They're a rich mouthful of flavor made with bone. Um, oftentimes, I'll just take like a... <laughs> a steak, you know, and use the meat in that too, because then I'm going to use the meat for something else. But I'll have whatever, whatever meat, uh, beef product I use there's going to be the bone. I got this um, neck bone. Let me show it to you. It's phenomenal. It, there's, there's so much just in one little piece and I got a bunch of pieces. So um, let me show you, let me show you what it looks like. Okay. Look at these things. Now I went down to the Asian market um, in Phoenix to pick up some fresh herbs <laughs> because I knew I was going to make this stock, so I intentionally went down to go get the fresh herbs. Quite a jaunt, but it'll be worth it. Now, these, they only had them frozen, and I got them yesterday, and I kept them in the refrigerator overnight, so there's still there's still ice on it, but that's okay, because, um, but let, let me show you, let me show you the marbling and such. You see all, all that dark stuff? That's the marrow. That's the flavor. And there's, look at, look at how much bone there is. There's so much bone that you, there's not a single piece on here that's not going to give me that amazing flavor. And then these pieces of meat, um, when I'm done with it, perfect for ta um, tacos or whatever. So I'm just going to really, really dry these up as best as I can. I'm going to put a little salt. Then we're going to sear them. I'll, I'll show you right along, but mo more importantly, I just need you to to decide which which meat you want. You do not have to use bone, uh, neck bone. This is neck bone. Um, you do have to use bone. Uh, it doesn't have to be neck bone, but it just makes sure that there's a lot of the marrow. Such an interesting little thing, right? <laughs> Who would have thought that this is going to make such an amazing broth? All right, so this, I'm going to put some salt and let it sit for just a minute and then take it over to the um, stove. And this is my, these are my beautiful herbs. And I just picked lots of different great herbs. Um, parsley, sage, rosemary. I didn't have time. <laughs> they didn't have time, so I got oregano. Uh, but uh, time, yeah, time would have been my my choice. But for whatever reason, they didn't have that. They had a ton of other things. But um, I just took a bunch. Of, there's, yeah, just just a bunch. I'm I'm sorry, but that's the only uh, measurement I've got on there. This was uh, half a bunch of the parsley. This baby is just one. I love rosemary. I love rosemary. And um, it came It came in this whole, let me move it because I don't want the dirt. It came in this whole thing. I wish, I wish I was that person that could plant this and grow it. Nope, I, I'm not. I, I've tried too many times. I'm over it. But this baby, I'm going to be making some uh, rosemary cardamom cookies with that. <laughs> so I'm a happy girl. All right, getting back to this. So half a bunch of parsley, a really generous sprig of rosemary. And again, these are half bunches of of the um, living plants that came in like this. So this was half. You get an idea. This is all going to go in my um, bouquet garnier. I showed you that in the last video. I'm going to show it to you again. I've got about 12 cloves and about, mm, I think, 10 uh, bay leaves only because that's what I grabbed. I grab whatever you want. Um, and strange enough, two prunes. 
<laughs> all of this is going to go in well not not the garlics the garlics are going to go separate this in this particular one because we're going to we're going to do it so differently but this is my bouquet garnier I've got a bigger piece of cloth because I've got some big herbs there. Got it? Oh, I need my peppercorns. Got cloves. Prunes. Seriously? Who would have thought? <laughs> but I'm telling you. Let me go get my peppercorns. I know you guys like to know amounts. Um, what are we looking at? Let's go with about a tablespoon of peppercorns. And some string. And um, I'm gonna be using my big stock pot, so uh, this particular pot does not have a handle. To tie the others, uh, the end, end of the string around. So we're just gonna make a satchel. And it, it doesn't matter, just so long as it's nicely covered. You see how it's... And then tie it in a knot. Did I get everything? I did. The way that this is made, I, I'm telling you, this is one of those... <laughs> This was one of those things that make, it's just going to make you feel like a champion because it's so weird. <laughs> it's just so weird the way everything is put together. All right, so this is my huge satchel. Uh, and it's huge only because of all the fresh herbs. Um, this will also be a clearer broth because, because of this. Um, although it's a dark broth, so it's not going to really matter. All right, next step, the vegetables. Okay, again with the whole, the whole onion and uh, the skin and all, which by the way, and I, I forgot to mention this last time, but there are more antioxidants and uh, nutrition in the skin than there is in the whole onion. Go figure, right? Go figure. So we're just gonna, well, we'll cut them because I want. So I'm gonna get this in quarters, a whole onion, skin and all, in quarters, and this is this is mirepoix. This is the um, the holy trinity they say in soups and stocks and broths and whatnot. Now, when I'm done with these, I always take the carrots out because they are so full of flavor. The other day, I made the chicken broth, and these carrots they tasted they didn't taste like carrots. I had people over, and they thought it was a, a vegan kind of thing because it tasted like it tasted like meat this i won't put in because there's dirt but yeah the, the, the carrots totally picked up the flavor of the chicken and it tasted just like meat it was really quite fun all right so this stuff is all going to go in at one time let's go to the stove Kind of a neat thing at, at our household is that once a week, everybody makes dinner. Every one person makes dinner that day. Today, my granddaughter's making dinner and she wanted to make, um, oh yeah, I look really awkward. I felt a little high. <laughs> okay, um, what? <laughs> so my granddaughter's uh, making dinner tonight. My grandson, when he makes dinner, <laughs> This boy can live off of top ramen and hot dogs. <laughs> and his theory is there's a whole bunch of different flavors. You can have top ramen every day and not have the same thing. It's not a lie, but <laughs> no, Zach. Um, so my, my granddaughter wants to make ramen. Ramen, not top ramen, but the good stuff. And so she, we went to the H Mart yesterday, the, the um, market, and oh, she went crazy with everything they had there. So I said, okay, well, I'll make the broth since I wanted to show you guys anyways, and then she'll be using the broth for her ramen. Um, she's not a YouTube kind of girl, but I'll try to sneak in a few pictures to show. <laughs> but if not, we'll do ramen another day because I don't want you to miss it. This broth, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> like that. <clears throat> Shut up, Maria, I'm cooking. 
So there's gonna be a lot of noise going with the fan and the searing and whatnot. So this is such a fun, this one is fun because you're just gonna use all sorts of elements and just feel like a champ. So let's, let's just start. Okay, so in my stock pot, I've got some oil going again because I'm going to sear this beef. So once I sear it, um, I'm going to put it back onto this big cookie sheet that I have. That's where the magic's going to happen. So I have um, just enough oil in the bottom to get it going. It's going to get hot. I'm going to have the fan going and the um, vent. So I'll try not to talk. <laughs> yes, I know I'm lying. Seared. You, I, it's not cooked. You, you know this, right? C cooking is searing is not cooking. It's, it's all pink and raw inside. I just put a caramelized coating on it. That's really essentially what searing does. So this is going to go on the cookie sheet. Fires off. And in this bowl, I've got all my mirepoix, carrots, celery, and onion. I also put the garlic in here, and you want to use a quality uh, vegetable uh, olive oil here. And we're going to give a pretty good, we're going to coat them really well because we're going to mix them in with the meat. Uh, I don't know, quarter of a cup, half a cup, just whatever it's going to take to, to get them coated. All right, and then I'm gonna put my fire back on and put a little bit more olive oil in here. And this is a Kalamata olive oil. Um, I don't know, can you see that? It's backwards, the way the camera is set up. So this is gonna get hot. I'm gonna um, put these in. Here for just to get a little bit of a caramelization on it. That's that's it. All right, one more stir. And go to the next step. All right, we're gonna load up this cookie sheet. Everything is going in the oven. I've got the garlic in there. You know what, you get the idea. Let me just empty this in there and pour the oil back on and then I'll be right back. Okay. If you can, fit everything in a single row and just give one more drizzle of olive oil. This is going to bake in the oven 425 degrees for 45 minutes. I know, right? Okay, so in the meantime, we've got this hot. I'm going to add in a, a tube of tomato paste. I, I like the tubes because they're they're just concentrated. They're just so much better. Just the paste. If you don't have it, just use a, a can. <laughs> Weird stuff, right? All right. And I want to toast this paste. Flavor on flavor. I think that might be my new tattoo. <laughs> I don't want to 
burn it and it, it can go quickly if you don't watch it. Keep it moving. All right, now we're gonna add uh, about a cup of <laughs> Cabernet Sauvignon. This is gonna deblaze the bottom. It's gonna take all that gunk off. And I'm gonna keep, it's hot. I'm gonna keep mixing it and I'm gonna lower the heat to a medium low. And I'm just gonna keep on mixing it. The alcohol is going to burn out and it's gonna leave a very rich, rich flavor. Crazy stuff. I love, I love uh, recipes that just make you, make you work. <laughs> so you can see the alcohol, the alcohol is, is gone, and so is most of the liquid. So I'm going to start adding my water. And the strange thing is, I'm starting to work on my broth now even before I have the meat in there. So I'm taking components and I'm gonna master them separately and then marry them later. So this will go. I'm gonna do two. I'm gonna fill it to about like right there because I know with the chicken, that's about where my broths go. So I'm gonna fill it again. It's gonna reduce. I'm going to put in my Bouquet Garnier. It's going to give me, release all those amazing flavors and spices. And I'm going to keep this on a medium low until the meat is done. And I did lie about where I'm going to, where I'm going to put it because I forgot about the actual meat. So let's not go that high, but we still want to put in a little bit more. That's fine. Because once the meat gets in, it's going to rise. So it'll cook like this until the um, beef is ready to be submerged into this hot bath. Okay, so the bones are going, the broth is going. I've got to show you these things, you guys. <laughs> I'm dying here. <laughs> Can you see that? Can you see how dark they are, and that these are so tender already, and we're only halfway through. <sighs> yeah, baby. Okay, so I want to come in. Look at all that marrow giving me its goodies. I'm going to flip these over for the second half. This is just nuts. Man, it's beautiful. All right, so you get the idea. I don't want to bore you with this, but I kind of want you to see. Okay, so the bones are going. This broth is simmering nicely. It's just a low, just a low simmer. I'm not looking for it to do anything intense right now, but give me flavor. That's all I want. So I've got this pot of flavor, the cookie sheet of flavor, and then I'm gonna combine them. All right, baby, it's time to rock. So I've got my <laughs> satchel going here in my broth, and I'm going to take these pieces and just put them inside. Everything goes in the pot. Can you see that? Let's make sure you can. All right, now you got it. I might need to add more water. I want to make sure that the bones are covered. I'm going to put the vegetables in here. I'm going to put the um, all the 
gunky goody stuff that's on the bottom of this cookie sheet. The juices and the everything, everything goes inside. Those onions are tender. This is where I want to really just eat the carrots. <laughs> but we're not done with them. I can't have them yet. I have to wait. We all have our purpose, right? I'm on a roll. I just don't want to turn off the camera. <laughs> you can fast forward if you want to, but... I don't care. Yeah, I think we're good with the water. Which is good because I didn't really want to dilute it. Alrighty. Let me get the drippings in here as well. So these are the pan drippings and this is the part that can make it cloudy. However, there's so much flavor here. There's no way I'm gonna pass that up. Just take it all in. All right, this goes back on high for about 10 minutes. And then it goes to simmer for about an hour. Okay, so that's gonna to come to a nice little boil. But I wanna to talk to you about salt usage. Um, you wanna salt it, you want, you want salt. I, in the back of my mind, I never know who's gonna be eating what I'm gonna make with it, so I really wanna limit the salt intake because there are people who I cook for um, when they come over uh, are sensitive to salt and I don't want I don't want overload. I don't want them not to be able to enjoy this food. So sometimes I'll just make it as it is and then salt it as needed. But this, you kind of want that salt to kind of go with the whole, the whole broth. So I am going to salt this one, knowing that whatever I make with it, I'll use less salt then. Okay? Okay. So give it a generous salt. Generous. Um, and then let it just kind of work together. Okay, so this is boiling. This has got a good boil to it. I'm gonna lower it to a simmer and I'm gonna let it simmer for one hour. All right, baby, we are good to go. I'm gonna turn off the heat. Can you see how much it has um, evaporated and consolidated and just gotten just, uh, 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 you know, you know that flavor. Um, I meant reduced. I didn't, I don't know what the heck I was thinking. <clears throat> all right, so we're going to take all these goodies out. Everything's going to go back on here. And then all these, all this meat, that's, that's just going to make some amazing tacos later tonight. <laughs> okay, so everything has given me everything I want. So I'm just going to continue to take all of this bulk and put it onto my tray. Okay, so you know the routine. You need your bowl, a strainer, and your cheesecloth. 
and we're just going to empty this broth into here and clean it up. Let me position you better. Okay, I want to show you this part here. This is the this is the marrow. This is all the great flavor, but it it's trash now. And so I don't want this in my in my broth. So I'm just kind of scraping it down, taking out as much as the liquid, but this gets tossed. I'm going to rinse out this uh, cheesecloth and then finish up. But I do want you to know that when you're doing this and you're seeing all this stuff, it's normal. It's done its job. And now we put it to rest. Okay. I'm, I'm showing this so you don't, you don't freak out when you do this and you're going, what the heck? It didn't show that. It, it, they don't show it, but that's that's what happens and then on to the next step until it's all done okay so this is beautiful and this is good to go but I'm gonna skim off uh, all the oils and the fats. Now remember we used quite a bit of olive oil so that's in here. You don't really need that. And if I were again using this for gravy or whatnot I'd leave I'd leave that fat. But I know that um, my daughter granddaughter is going to be making um, ramen with this so we don't want we don't want that. So I'm just going to remove all the fat and I'm just going to put this whole thing in the refrigerator until she's ready to use it. Otherwise I would have um, put them in individual containers like this to put in the freezer. All right I'm just going to finish that up and you can see here let me see if I can show you. You can see uh, the line of oil that's what I want to get rid of. So I'm going to work on that and get rid of that. Okay, that's the broth. It's nice and clear for broth. Did I just see something? <laughs> Probably my eyes. Yeah, there shouldn't be anything that got through that sieve, all right. Let me um, tell you something about these broths. Okay, these broths that I show you, as a caregiver, there's always there's always the physical part of food that I have to be concerned with, for especially when I have elderly guests. Um, if you have someone who has dietary limitations, of course those have to be the priority. Um, that has to be your first. If they can't have sugar, you're not going to be making sh your normal sugar stuff. You go an alternate way. If you have someone who can't have solid food anymore for you know various reasons um and they're really stuck on a on a liquid diet i'm telling you what this is the best stuff you could do for them because it's it's liquid it's going to go down it's going to do everything it needs to do but they're not going to miss food because the what can you see that flavor yeah it's a mouthful of flavor so <clears throat> if they can't eat you know what you're eating on the on the plate make a big pot of this and just kind of portion it out and they'll be very happy they'll be very happy to have this um, and then again like I said with this pot a broth that I just made. Um, we're going to use that to make uh, ramen. So tons of flavor, tons of uses, and it's kind of fun to make because it's just so crazy and off the board. But but don't be afraid of this. Anything that you saw that you thought intimidated you, work around it to where you're comfortable with it. You could put the whole thing in the pot if you want to. You didn't have to uh, roast it. Just 
try it that way first. Okay, my friends, until next time, happy baking. Ah, oh, that was fun. Don't forget to like and subscribe.